Okay, this video is to talk about rebuilding a water pump for a Kaiser 226 uh, flathead in line six. Uh, this particular water pump is removed from a 1953 Kaiser Manhattan. Uh, now it should apply to uh, 51 to 55 Kaisers. It would have been marketed as a supersonic engine. And then 1954 to 1966 Jeep and Willys. And that would have been marketed as, I believe, the Super Hurricane engine. Um, now, I have written here this part number, this Deco DP1654. Um, this part number was unavailable at the time I needed a water pump. And I kind of had my doubts if it will become available again. But it was showing on back order through Summit Racing for $162. And if it does become available again, that's a good price for it. Uh, in my case, now to add to that, I've seen this water pump listed on several several uh, restoration websites for Kaiser and um, Jeep or Willys, and the prices range from $170 to $285 for a rebuilt pump. Uh, in my case, I found a kit on eBay for um, $85, and it was a good quality kit, and if I could do it again... I would. Now, I've already got the job done on this water pump, but to show you what you get, these are the old parts here, but with that rebuild kit, you get a new shaft and bearing cartridge, you get a new water pump impeller, uh, you get a new seal. Now, this is the original one from 1953. This, The new seal looks quite a bit different from this. Um, it should be a better seal. Um, you get two gaskets so between the backing plate and the engine block and this is sits in between the water pump housing and its backing plate and to show you so this the shaft and bearing assembly sits in that water pump like that um to start out with as they come out in this direction So the bearing assembly sits right in here. There is hidden inside in that bore is a circlip that that bearing sits against. And then right about in here is the water pump seal. So in between those two spaces, there is a, a cavity here. This is the uh, weep hole. So if that water pump seal leaks, coolant will flow out of the weep hole like it's intended for. So again, that is an empty cavity that sits in between the bearing cartridge and the water pump seal. So to do this job, what you need at a minimum is a hydraulic shop press. I have a 2010 model from, or I'm sorry, a 20 ton model from Harbor Freight Tools that works great. And then you also wanna have a uh, bearing splitter like that. Now, to get started out with, what you do is uh, first remove the circlip right here. Very easy to do with an average pair of pliers. So you pull the circlip out, out of there. Uh, once you do that, you know, mock the water pump in your hydraulic press like that. Uh, at this point, you want to support the cast iron housing. Now, I was able to do that with, I had some various pieces of steel and bar stock laying around. But using those parts, I was able to support the housing and let this, um, this is the flange that the radiator fan bolts to. I just let this hang in free space. Um, you wanna be careful when you support this housing and be thoughtful about how you do it because you, you definitely do not wanna crack this housing. Um, now, pressing it out shouldn't, I mean, it takes quite a bit of force, but not a tremendous amount of force, but so I had an impact socket, a heavy duty thick walled impact socket there. And with the hydraulic press, I was able to press the shaft out in that direction. Uh, once you do that, this impeller just pulls right out. And then now, if you can imagine, without the water pump housing in place, you're stuck. Now you have just the bare bones, the shaft and bearing with the flange pressed up here. 
And what I did was, you know, grab a bearing splitter, you know, supported this, that uh, flange in my hydraulic press. And using the press, I was able to press the shaft out in that direction to separate the shaft from this flange. Now, this is a very tight interference fit in between those two parts. So in my case, I applied heat to this with an oxyacetylene torch, um, and that helped me be able to drive this uh, the shaft out from the flange. Now, once you do that, you want to you know clean the inside bore here. You can do that with a, a Scotch Brite pad, a wire wheel. Or in my case, I had a line bore hone that's intended for cleaning uh, wheel cylinders, brake wheel cylinders. That worked out really well. But you clean that out, and again, there is a circlet that sits right here, and that's what the bearing cartridge sits against. So you want to drive this uh, shaft and bearing assembly down into place until this at the tip of my thumb here until that since sits against that circlip it doesn't take a tremendous amount of force to drive this down what i ended up doing was using a, a 7 8 socket because you want to first of all you want you want to drive down by the outer race of this bearing and not by the shaft but with a hammer and a socket very carefully i was able to drive it down into the bore until it sat against that circlip I also uh, wiped down that bore with anti-seize compound to act as a dry lubricant. But once that seated against the circlip, I knew it was right where it needed to be. And then you can install this upper circlip. Now, once you do that, uh, then you're free to, now you can focus on reinstalling this flange to the shaft. Um, you wanna support it in your hydraulic press you want to support the shaft and not the housing, but support the shaft. I had a couple pieces of quarter inch steel plate. And now, and again, I wiped down everything with anti-seize compound. Um, to anybody who think that might be a problem, it really isn't because it's such a, a tight interference fit in between these two parts. I mean, there's no way that's ever coming loose or working its way loose. Um, also, I want to point out too, the bore for this flange, I actually damaged a little bit, or it was scarred up. So what I actually used a card by Burr, very carefully in the drill, I cleaned out that bore on this uh, flange. Uh, but you want to do that carefully and thoughtfully. But, you know, use the hydraulic press, press this down onto the shaft until it's flush or even. Then you can flip it around to this side. Now you want to focus on installing the seal before you put the impeller on. Now again, this is the old seal from 1953, the original one. Uh, the new seal, I just have a picture of it here in the instructions. Grab this. That is what the new seal looks like. So it's a typical lip seal. Uh, Inside of that is a spring. There is the seal there that actually seals the shaft. And there's an inner uh, steel uh, ring that fits in there. And you'll note in the instructions, it points out 420, you know, 425 thousandths of an inch. So basically this lip seal uh, fits into the bore, the bore on the water pump housing. And you want to be careful and thoughtful about how you do this. So what I started out with doing was the, with this steel ring right here, this inner steel sleeve, um, you know, I pressed down this with a piece of pipe that I had laying around, pressed it down, and I got to a point where this was starting to fit inside the bore in the cast iron housing. Um, and then I took very carefully with a punch, very carefully, went around the circumference, and knocked this lip seal into place in the uh, cast iron housing in the water pump. 
And then, and this will all make probably more sense to you once you're actually in the job. But, um, so they have it marked here. Between here and here, you wanna have, it should be 425 thousandths of an inch. Now I used a dial caliper um, to measure that and it worked out great. But once this is fully seated in the bore, then you can take a hammer and knock this down slightly until that measures 425 thousandths of an inch. Again, this will make more sense to you once you're actually in the job. But to, to add to uh, the hydraulic press and the bearing splitter, you're going to want a dial caliper too. Um, yeah, actually, I'll show you. Paper's extremely dirty now, but those are the instructions for it. Uh, I mentioned here machining on the impeller. Um, I had no problems with that whatsoever. Okay, now you're free to install. Now the seal that's back there, with that properly installed, now you're free to install the impeller. And the impeller should be uh, roughly flush with the, the shaft here. What's important is, is that the impeller is beneath the surface right here, Those are the backing plate bolts to here. So you wanna be sure the impeller has to sit beneath that. And also the impeller cannot be rubbing against the uh, cast iron housing here. Now I measured, before I did this job, I measured on the old pump, uh, 20 thousandths of an inch clearance with a feeler gauge in between the cast iron housing and that uh, impeller. But the most important thing is you don't want the impeller to rub against the cast iron housing and you don't want the water pump, and I'm sorry, the, the impeller, you don't want it to be flush. You, you know, you want it to be beneath the surface right here. Now in my case, I pressed this impeller down a little bit further than what I wanted to, but I mean, instead of, I was shooting for 20 thousandths of an inch clearance right here, at the tip of my finger, I'm probably sitting at about maybe 15 thousandths. 16 thousandths maybe but not a big deal there so but anyway you know after you get the job done you spin it there should be absolutely no contact in between the impeller and the cast iron housing and that's pretty much it it's a home stretch from there um you know obviously the backing plate goes to here um yeah that's pretty much it so with all that said and done, it should, now mind you, the, the seal in there uh, relies on uh, coolant to lubricate it. So actually, I don't like to spin these too much, but you can feel it feels, it's got a great feel to it. It feels like a brand new water pump. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So overall, not a bad job. You just want to be careful and thoughtful about how you do it. And again, you want you need a hydraulic press, a bearing splitter, um, set of dial calipers. And again, that was that 425 thousandths of an inch that I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, doing using those tools, you can rebuild the water pump in your Kaiser 226. But if you have any questions or anything, I'm, I'm pretty responsive on YouTube. So leave a comment if you have any questions.